Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here, and I have a very sad story on this Wednesday to share with you. Someone just messaged me a link to this video, and uh, I just wanted to draw some attention to this and shed some light on it because I've been a long time uh, shiner of light, I suppose, upon Gibson's practice of destroying their own guitars, throwing them in dumpsters, but this is beyond anything I ever expected from even them or... <laughs> I just, I mean, just take a look at this. Look at what they have done here. Um, apparently in the process of liquidating the Memphis factory, they have destroyed hundreds of guitars. I mean, and I mean, they just ran over all of these guitars. I mean, yeah, no, no redemption for any of these things. All brand new, all new stock. Um, and this was just something that they had in the warehouse that they couldn't sell apparently. They didn't think about uh, taking any of the hardware off. They didn't think about trying to repurpose any of this stuff. They just crush it and destroy it at the scrapyard. Just absolutely unbelievable. So this fellow BJ, who uh, shared this video on his YouTube page, had also shared another video uh, where he was involved in the liquidation of and dismantling of the Memphis factory whenever uh, the Memphis factory closed down uh, late last year. So... Um, yeah, he's legit. The guy worked for Gibson Guitars, apparently, and uh, he was the Gibson witness, according to him, of the destruction of all these guitars. He was the one who had to document this for, uh, I suppose, insurance purposes? Yeah, I was with the Memphis location. I was uh, maintenance and facilities out there. And uh, as part of the, you know, because I did generally everything with, for the company, honestly, from keeping everything going and to, to, to you know, contractors and all, just about all the nitpicky stuff, you know. But when they decided to close that, I actually helped shut down the plant and then I left on good terms with the severance and all that with all the people that didn't relocate to Nashville. Right. So I'm presuming they didn't make you sign any kind of NDA or anything for the video that you took or any of that stuff? When I took that video, I, I, I saw signed nothing. As a matter of fact, I was standing next to a guy with corporate. And he says, okay, everybody take lots of videos so they know we did this. Right, right. Now, who was making you do that? Was that Henry? Was that during the Henry time, or was that right after no, no, that? This, this, this was post-Henry. Okay. This was post-Henry post uh, when, when, when they were trying to when they were trying clean up, uh, when the, the investors uh, were, all trying to, were all trying to clean up the mess before the end of the fiscal year. Right. Um, and... and, and <sighs> And they had a lot, they had a huge mess. This particular line of guitars was the Firebird X. Right. Um, uh, I don't know if you know how much you know about the Firebird X, but it was a horrible guitar with too much technology, all based on like Windows 98 or something. It was, or, or something silly like that. Some kind of really Windows-based thing that was un-upgradable un -upgradable 
Um, and they, 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 they literally could not sell these guitars and they were on the books. So right. that's why they were destroying them. Um, I left all those details out. I kind of didn't say a whole lot in the video on purpose mm -hmm. and just posted facts just to kind of see what people would say about it, you know? Yeah. And I thought it was, I, th and I thought it was just kind of a, kind of a cool thing to show people what really happens to guitars. If you look on my page, there's another video I posted of a guy slicing up some ES guitars. Uh, that was actually the last batch of guitars that we uh, sliced up. Uh, that was that we sliced up uh, in the Gibson facility uh, before we uh, uh, before we actually sent out the last piece of equipment, and it was actually closed. Right. Um, so so this was was this at a time during uh, was this during the bankruptcy proceedings, or was this after the new people took over? Like was JC already the head guy by then when this, this video was after, taken? This is, yeah, this is after the, after JC took over, and this was just them trying to clean everything up. Right. I what I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can shed some light on this, but what I don't really understand is why, why these guitars weren't retooled. Why why weren't the electronics stripped and and you know different electronics put in? I mean, because presumably the guitars were playable, but it was just the electronics that were just so horrible. Well, um, the backside had like this big battery pocket on them. Uh huh. Where there were, where, and then on the side of the guitar, I didn't. You don't see that in the video either. But on the side of the guitar was like a little tuner where you could actually like tweak your sound. I'm not a musician, but you actually like tweak your output of your guitar sound on like a e, like a you know a little tuner board on the on the on the side of it while you're playing. Yeah. Um, there was just so much stuff in so many different places. The wood was pretty unusable. I see. Because that's so many holes in it and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody like me or you, I'm, I'm not a big gu guitarist, but somebody like me or all these or you or some of these other guitar people, I'm sure could have taken this thing, pulled some things out, made some decorative little things, and made something cool out of it. But that's not how Gibson works. Gibson wants to make sure everything that leaves their factory is 100% perfect all the time, every time. Yeah, I mean, and I it, understand it, it, that uh, that's that's what they say, but it, <laughs> according to what I've seen, that hasn't always been the case, unfortunately. Well, I'm inclined to agree with you on that as well. Yeah, but. Their official stance. <laughs> sure. Oh, absolutely. I, I and I, I get that, man. My big thing. I don't know if you're familiar with my channel or not, but my big thing is like, uh, you know, I'll repurpose a lot of stuff. I make amplifiers and different things, and you know, I I try to save stuff from the garbage more than throw it away. So to me, it's just like it's totally antithetical, kind of to what I how I view the oh, guitar. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. I've got uh, I've got a guitar that was on the wall of my pool room there for a while. It was a. Uh, it was, it, it was, it's actually a BB key yeah. and it came, it came back for something silly. I think it had some, a couple gouges, a couple of gouges on the back or like a dent in the headstock somewhere or something, something silly. Right. Um, and it was labeled just to be destroyed and taken out of the serial number batch. I took it out of the batch and set it on there. And before I left, I got proper paperwork and I took the guitar with me. Right. Um, yeah, see, you know, it's something that they were going to cut up, but it's a perfectly good guitar. Yeah, see, that's something that uh, that during the Norland era they did a lot. Like, you know, they would send out uh, demo guitars with their rep reps that would take them on the road and show them to different people. And, and of course, they would get a little scratch and dents, and then come back to the factory and they'd they probably label them as seconds and and sell them as seconds. Um, and yeah. I'm wonder I'm just wondering why this stuff isn't being stamped as seconds and uh and and discounted massively and just and just put out there or or even like written off in such a way that they could donate them to charities or something for charity auctions or anything but going to the landfill you see what i'm saying i've got, I've got a little bit of insight into that okay and uh, this is what i'm thinking from where i've seen and i'm not a big i'm not as big into the mu music scene i'm more of a just do things for companies kind of a person however when i, I was with gibson for six years and they have uh under henry made a lot of bad decisions, which made their market share dwindle. Okay. Right. So their market share has dwindled a lot. Now they're making great, uh, they have great ideas in the works to, to, to make their market share go up, make the name viable, make it a bigger in the industry. But right now their market share is so small and they're so small that they don't, they want to make sure what part of their market share they have is not, it can't be considered second at all. Yeah, but doesn't it, um, it? It seems to me that the reason that they've lost so much market share is because not everybody is a doctor and lawyer and can't afford a three, four, five thousand dollar guitar. You know, I mean, you're it's, absolutely, it's, you're, no, you are absolutely correct. It's something that I preached the entire time I was there. 
I'm just a facilities guy, then, I, then nobody listens to me. Yeah. But I, I agree. I mean, I, I think that some of the people like Mike Volts and some of the others that are very good guys, very knowledgeable people, are just older. And there's just not that many people that think like that anymore. I think their marketing people needs to be repopulated with 25-year-old musicians. Yeah. And not and not 65-year-old dudes. They're all great people. I'm not bad enough for nobody. But if you want to get into this to get right, your marketing people need to need to need to be who you're trying to sell to. And if you're trying to sell to five people in the world that can afford your guitars, your business is going to go bad. Yeah, it seemed like maybe that was the reason they hired Mark Agnesi because he was supposed to be young, you know, younger and hipper. But it just seems, you know, with that video they made, it kind of backfired on them. Uh, I don't know. That, that, those those guitars though were were something that was uh, have been unsellable for a long time. Yeah, and it was just to get them off the books, kind of a thing. Well, um, I mean, uh, you know, and I, I agree with you that they were unsellable. But how much were they asking for those though? Those were a pretty high dollar. Guitar, weren't they? I mean, they was like, uh, I can't remember. What I What was the price I, point I, on I, those? I couldn't honestly give you any kind of numbers. I don't I okay. didn't deal with any numbers. I yeah. have to Google numbers on the guitars I own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you there, man. Um, man, yeah, I just, you know, it's one of those things I just, I can't help but think that there could have been some kind of repurposing that was done or some kind of charity instead of, you know, or even, gosh, you know, even taking the hardware and the pickups out, you know, before destroying them all. It just seems like it's such a waste. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. When I was working with Gibson, I would watch them cut up, cut up, cut up guitars that didn't make the cut. I'd see them take, you know, daily 10, 20 ES guitars, depending on how, how everything was going, that were, you know, painted and ready to go and just cut them up because there was some teeny tiny little blemish. If you were to take and say, one of those a week, build it out, and say, give a person a job or once a week to find somebody charitable to give this guitar to to make our name better. Yeah. You could do that and give it to somebody and make the name better and create positive vibrations for a company. However, under Henry, nobody was allowed to do that because of the fear of losing their job. That's fairly ingrained in the company now. And I don't think, I, I, I don't think with... Without without getting it, uh, I don't think without getting the CEO involved, it's ever going to happen. And he's too busy trying to you know keep the ship upright. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like also that the new guy isn't that much better if he's destroying hundreds of Firebirds rather than trying to find an alternative. You know, I, I think well, that's what I'm seeing. I, I, I think that was something that was already in motion. I will say the new guy, oh man, his name is slipping my mind. Uh, J like JC. JC, yes, JC. Yeah. I've met JC several times. Okay. Um. In his position, you meet somebody like me, you don't that people like him don't remember me. I just I shake hands and I'm kind. Sure. I've met him I met him twice. The second time he's I, I was just happened to be there near him. He stopped the conversation when I stepped into the room, came over to me, called me by name, and shook my hand. Fantastic human being. He is younger than uh, he is younger than Henry, and he is a musician and he is truly passionate about the product. I yeah. really do honestly believe that. Um, I think that right now at the moment, though, he's just he's got to pick what he can worry about. Sure. Well, can can you think? And this has kind of been one of my main points, man. Since all this stuff has started snowballing with Gibson, uh, can you think of any reason? I mean, being in the position you were in, that Gibson couldn't uh, take some of these guitars with these minor blemishes you're talking about and and actually build them out like you say. Uh, into a different model, like say if something has a blemish, like uh, okay, set it aside and let's make it part of this new relic model that we're coming up with, or let's, you know what I mean? So, so the blemish is oh, not I, as I, no, anything. You're, 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 I, I, I agree with you completely. Uh, they're actually over in the custom shops have some really cool things. I don't know if I should or shouldn't talk about, but I saw one. But they're over there in the custom shop doing some really cool things to make some aged guitars. Mm -hmm. um, you can easily take some of those. And, and move them over, but Gibson has suffered for a long time. When I was with them, they're getting through it. They have suffered for a long time of, of uh, a little bit of uh, competition between the branches. So, uh, you know, the, the, the people in, you know, and, and, and all the different factories uh, don't communicate like they should. Right. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it just seems to me that, you know, if, if even if they didn't... Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. It just seems to me, man. Uh, one, one more question, I'll let you go. Um, 
you know, I mean, was there any reason that you can think of in your position with Gibson that they wouldn't uh, be able to take those guitars that had those minor blemishes and stamp them as seconds like they used to in the Norland era and then discount them appropriately? Hey, you know, the only reason I can come up with is uh, manpower um, and, a, and a thriving need to keep their business afloat rather than worry about blemished guitars. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, man, BJ, I'm going to let you go, buddy. I really appreciate this, dude. And uh, like I said, I, I'm, if it's okay, I mean, I'm, I'm going to use this on my Friday show or, or maybe even sooner. I'm not sure yet. But, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate all your commentary, man. It, it really helps me shed a light on why they're doing some of the things they're doing. Yeah, man, look, cause like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to badmouth anybody or anything. And I didn't have any neg negative reasons I posted it or any other things I posted. I just, uh, I just kind of thought some people would like to see that particular video. It was, you don't see a machinery driving over guitars like that very often. That's, no, not at all. If you, look, if you look at my video, my YouTube page, it's all about stuff that you haven't seen before, and it is all over the place. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to link your videos, man, and I sure appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And if it comes down, it's because Gibson Legal made me do it, and there's nothing uh, offensive to anybody. I, I hear you, buddy. All right, appreciate you. All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye. So yeah, that was uh, that was a very interesting phone conversation with BJ there. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed this video. I mean, as much as you can enjoy something like this, it's almost a tragedy. But uh, anyway, that'll do it for this video. Hit subscribe down below, and for now, y'all take care.